our last example is, is quite different. It's quite different. It's, 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 I think it's, I think it's the be most beautiful of the... Okay, we've done this. Let's, let's keep going. We're going to talk about what's called the Euler phi function. This is the same Euler. This Euler is all over the place. If you want to get a laugh, uh, check out the publications of Leonard Euler. He was incredibly prolific. So for an integer n, at least two, let phi of n, the Euler phi function, denote the number of elements in 1 to n, which are relatively prime. In other words, have greatest common divisor 1. For example, phi of 12 is 4, because look at the numbers from 1 to 12, and which ones are relatively prime to 12? I think it's 1, 5, 7, and 11. All the others have a common factor of it. I ask you to compute 144 by hand. Actually, I don't do that. Uh, you could. It would take you about five minutes, and you'd probably make a mistake. I would. I mean, okay. And now I ask you to compute phi of this number. I just made this number up: 324,481,700,624. How'd you like to do that? Okay, we can compute greatest common divisors pretty quickly. So I, I pick up the numbers from one up to that number, and one by one calculate the greatest common divisor, and every time the greatest common divisor is one, I add one to my total. I got an algorithm, but it's pretty slow. Question? What does it mean for num relatively Two numbers are relatively prime when their greatest common divisor is 1. So 1, 5, 7, and 11. Take their greatest common divisor with 12. It's 1. Take any other number, like 6. Greatest common divisor of 6 and 12 is 6. Greatest common divisor of, of 3, and et cetera. So the ones that are relatively prime are... 1, 5, 7, and 11, so the Euler phi function of 12 is 4. Now, right now, we have no chance of calculating this Euler phi function. I don't care by hand or computer. You, you could not get a computer to do the greatest common divisor, the Gaussian algorithm that we learned for computing greatest common divisor. You couldn't get it to run on that. But we can. Because here is the inclusion-exclusion formula for the Euler phi function. If you are able to factor in and determine its prime factors, so if the prime factors of n are p1, p2, up to some pk, then the Euler phi function phi of n is n times 1 minus 1 over p1 times 1 minus 1 over p2, etc. And here's the explanation. Imagine that product written out. Don't do it, but just imagine it. But again, be selectively lazy. Imagine that product being written out. There would be 2 to the k terms in that product. And what would they look like? You would be multiplying 1 minus 1 over P1 times 1 minus 1 over P1. Okay, so, so, okay, that's like a bunch of binomials. It's a bunch of binomials. Sometimes you take the 1, and sometimes you take the minus 1 over one of the primes. The number of times you take the negative is a minus 1 to a power. And then you have 1 over 1 prime, 1 over another prime, 1 over another prime, and the numerator will be n. What is that counting? And the explanation is at the bottom, and this is a for instance. If there were 8 or more prime factors, and you looked at the term where you chose the minus 1 over p3, minus 1 over p7, minus 1 over p8, then the term would be negative, but it, 
it would be n over p3, p7, p8, and that counts the number of integers which have the prime p3, the prime p7, and the prime p8 in common with n. And so those are your properties. Your properties are you satisfy property i when you shear the prime pi as a common factor with n. And the numbers which satisfy none of the properties, those are the ones which are relatively prime. So it's just the miracle of multiplication that's coming to the rescue. It's not that the terms are constant. It's that when they are grouped, they form this product. And so, if I want to compute phi of that big number, I first find its common factors. Now, there's a software tool called Maple, and I just plugged into this and said, Maple, what are the factors of this? And you do that with the I factor command. So the syntax is I actually typed I factor, parentheses, type that number, semicolon, and I hit carriage return, and it took Maple about one-tenth of a second to report that the factorization of that number into primes is 2 to the 4th times 109, 109 is a prime, 727 is a prime, and 255,923, that's a prime. So the Euler phi function of that is 3,000, whatever that number is, times 1 minus 1 over 2, times 1 minus 1 over 109, times 1 minus 1 over 727, times 1 minus 1 over 255923. Now, if you had to, you could do that by hand in an hour. And with Maple, you can do it as fast as you can type it. So any of the math software packages like Maple and Mathematica, you could probably do it in MATLAB for that matter. That's a real easy calculation. Uh, by the way, one of the reasons it gets easier by hand is that, you see, 1 minus 1 over 109 is 108 over 109. And the 109 cancels because this number has a 109 factor in it. So this arithmetic is actually much easier than it looks. Now, the 2 here doesn't cancel entirely with the 2 to the 4th, but it gets it down to 8. So this is actually, this calculation right here, I can simplify it. It's 8 times 108 times 726 times 255,922. And that's why you can do it in an hour. Pretty neat, huh? In the text, I tell a story where Alice and Bob are both asked to find the Euler phi function of a number that's about that long. A really big one. But the instructor tells Alice that this big number is the product of two primes, one about yay big and the other one about yay big. The professor does not tell Bob how to factor the big number. Now, how much of an advantage does Alice have if they're trying to find the Euler phi function of the big number? And what you're supposed to realize is that Alice has everything. Bob has nothing. Again, Alice has it all. Bob has nothing. Several hundred digit arithmetic 
doing a multiplication, Maple and Mathematica will do that in a heartbeat. Kabam like that. But you give Maple a several hundred digit number and say, Maple, I factor this, will you? And you might as well go on sabbatical because Maple's not going to do it. Mathematica's not going to do it. NASA is not going to do it. NSA, the Russians, the Chinese, the Pakistanis, the Israelis, everybody in the world, if we all put down all of our fighting and sheared our energies, we're not going to factor integers of several hundred digits. And forget it if it had 10,000 digits. But 10,000 digits, if you had it factored, you can compute the Euler fee function in a heartbeat. So this formula is neat, but it's got a glitch in it. Not a glitch, it's got a hitch. It's got a, it's got a subtlety. You have to be able to factor to use it. So if one way or another you can factor it, you can do it quickly. And if you can't factor, you are up the paddle, I mean up the creek without the paddle and, and much worse. Okay. Uh, that completes what I'm going to do with inclusion-exclusion.